Paw Partners, what's up? It's your favorite uncle, Uncle PJ, with another PowerPoint for today. And here it is. It says, we show our love for Jesus when we support others in our community. Wow, community. Everyone that is around us. You know, it's amazing how we look at so many challenges that happen in the world and be so quick to criticize it and all that stuff. But guess what? God wants us to celebrate. He wants us to grieve with others when they're having a hard time people around you just celebrate them or even when they're going through a hard time just be there for them that's what god asked for us to be to be our brothers and sisters keeper you get it once you do that i promise you god will be pleased so once again it's your favorite uncle uncle pj with another powerpoint for today god bless you Daria goes to kindergarten. IT was a big day for three-year-old Daria. It was her first day of kindergarten in Romania. Daria liked to dress up in pretty clothes, and she dressed up for her first day of kindergarten. The little girl with curly brown hair wore a white blouse and a pink hat and purple shoes. On her back, she had a little backpack that she carried all by herself. Then she stood outside the house waiting eagerly for mother to take her to the kindergarten. But Daria didn't like her first day of kindergarten. She didn't know the other little children. She didn't know the teacher, and the teacher looked big and scary. Daria's eyes showed her fear. It was like she was thinking, please, don't eat me, teacher. After two days of kindergarten, Daria changed her mind. She liked the kindergarten, she quickly made friends with the other little children. Teacher was kind and gentle. Daria looked forward to going to the kindergarten. I want to go there. I want to go there, she told mother. Daria learned a lot of things in a very short time at the kindergarten. Mother saw she began to act differently. When mother called her to eat, Daria refused to come to the table right away. We need to wash our hands before eating, the little girl said. Mother was not upset. Actually, she was pleased. Before, Daria played in the mud all day and was always dirty. Mother used to have to tell her, wash your hands, wash your hands. Daria always used to say, no. Now, however, Daria was washing her hands without even being asked. Finally, something good, Mother said. After washing and drying her hands, Daria sat down at the table for a traditional Romanian meal of samili, stuffed cabbage, and cornbread. Both were smothered in sour cream. For dessert, mother sometimes made pancakes with plum jelly. But again, Daria refused to eat. We need to pray, she said. Mother was surprised. The family didn't normally pray at the table. If you want to do that for yourself, you can do it, she said. Daria bowed her head and closed her eyes. Her face looked so innocent as she tried to fold her little hands in prayer. Finally, she succeeded in putting her hands together. Our Father in heaven, she prayed. Help us now and tomorrow. Amen. Daria learned many things at the kindergarten. She learned about being clean and about God and about how to pray. She also learned to paint, and she painted flowers and angels on rocks and wood and paper. She learned the alphabet, the colors, and plants. In Romania, children go to zero grade between kindergarten and first grade. When Daria finished kindergarten and started zero grade, her new teacher was surprised. Daria was the only child in zero grade who knew how to read and write. Where did you go to kindergarten? she asked. She learned that Daria had gone to a special kindergarten, a Seventh-day Adventist kindergarten in Romania. Part of your 13th Sabbath offering will help open a school and an after-school center in Romania where children like Daria can learn the alphabet, the colors, plants, painting, cleanliness, and, most important, about the God of heaven, who hears prayers. 
Thank you for planning a generous offering. Hello, PowerPointers. I hope you are wearing and ready to study this week's lesson. This week's lesson is lesson one. And the title is Simon's Unexpected Cross. The power text is Galatians 6 verse 2. It says, carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. The PowerPoint is, we show our love for Jesus when we support others in our community. Before we begin, let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you that you have been with us during this lesson review. Please keep us safe. Help us to get what you want to teach us in this Bible study, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now let's look at the Bible lesson at a glance. Simon is visiting Jerusalem from the territory of Cyrene in Africa. He is picked from the crowd by a Roman soldier and is told to carry the heavy cross for Jesus up the hill to Golgotha. Although Simon is initially forced to carry the cross, it is his sympathetic look, sympathetic, sympathetic look that draws the soldier to him. Simon responds to the needs of Jesus and helps him in his hour of need. This is a lesson about grace in action. We need to be aware of those around us in our community and be willing to help them. When we do this, we build up our community and show Jesus' love to those who we help. Now I'm going to introduce the rest of the members on the program. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're all regulars now. So I'm going to say my fellow PowerPointers on the program. We have Kezia, Nathaniel, and Marcia. Thank you for being here today. Let's start with our first question. What helps you to deal with those things that you find difficult in life? I repeat, what helps you to deal with those things that you find difficult in life? Well, I think the thing that helps me get through difficult things is to trust in God. Like, I know it's very a generic way of saying it, and I say it all the time, but trusting in God pretty much is kind of the answer for everything. But here, let me elaborate. Like, when I trust in God, like, 
it's God's will, and he wants me to do well in this, he will let me do this. And if he doesn't want me to do this, I won't do it. We need to trust, like, that helps me get through the hard times. Like, all right, Jesus wants me to do this. I, have, I got it. I can do this for Jesus. I can trust in God. I should do this for God. Like, when you think in that mindset, you feel like, oh, you got to do this. This is for Jesus. And it that kind of helps me get motivated, like, a lot whenever I do a hard thing. Like, earlier this morning, I went bike riding. I have a biking crew that starts at 630 that's why I'm a bit tired right now, but 6.30 we ride, and we did 12 miles today, and so I was lacking behind, because last night I had a swim race, and I was really tired. Today I was lacking behind, but I started to be like, all right, I've got this. Guy in front of me, I just need to pass him. I was actually praying to myself, I was like, please, God, don't let me come last, don't let me come last. But sure enough, since I believed in God and he, since I believed in God and I trusted him, he let me pass the guy. Even I even got fifth place out of six people. But what did that matter? <laughs> um, I really agree with what you said, Nathaniel. Trusting in God, it really does help you overcome hardships. One of the things that I usually do which I recommend, especially as a Christian, because you must cast your burdens upon Christ. But I found that I usually, I journaled to write down what my thoughts were to like really see what I'm thinking about. But like you said, trusting in God. And like I said before on the show, that sometimes I can be very anxious and worry a lot. But just reading the scriptures and God's promises for me and how he'll keep me and not forsake me and how I can cast my burdens upon him and he will help me. It really helps me to get through all the burdens and the worries that I face in my life. I agree. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Um, I think some ways that, well, a way that I get over hardship is like everybody said, trusting in God. And yes, this is cliche, but it's true. Like Nathaniel said, um, it's literally the best way to get through anything. And just remember that he always has your back. But um, I know the verse, Joshua 1 verse 9, and it says, be strong and have a good courage. Do not be afraid for the Lord that God is with thee wherever you go. So I always, I mean, actually, when I was in grade seven at the time, my teacher, she made us say this verse like every morning and it stuck with me and I try to remember it in hard times, but to overcome like physically with myself, I really just try to, um, it might not even be healthy to be honest, but um, I kind of sweep it under the rug and I try to tell myself in a way that you crying or sulking or even like making a big deal out of it is not going to change anything. So either you have to pray and ask God to give you the strength to work through it or it just just won't get done. And my mom also tells me this thing, if it won't matter in five years, don't spend five minutes crying about it. So that is what I do. Wow, that's a strong statement. Okay, I agree with all your answers. Now, I'm going to give my opinion on this, and I'm going to give my realistic view on this. So, first thing, I have a problem. I analyze the problem. I'm basically just saying what I learned in HFLA just five minutes ago. Um, state the problem, analyze the problem, look at the choices, consequences, then act, and then analyze again. So. That's just the basic steps that you might hear in like school. But me personally, no, depends on the problem. If it's, you know, a boy problem, first place, first thing we go to is my boys as friends. That's the first thing I go to. Any other thing, I just keep it with me. Usually people just go to their parents. My parents are very sensitive and I'm not into it. I'm gonna get a whole seminar on something and I'm not into it. So yeah, that's just my realistic view. But I agree with you guys that we should trust in God. And like I said last week, 
or the week before, or the week before. The I was saying that how when you have a problem, what was the first thing you think of? How am I going to fix this problem? Just stop right there. There's no I in this. I is not a part of the equation in this figure. It's you put the you replace the I with God, and then you can add whatever you want, and then you're equal to success. So she's just putting it in some school terms, simple terms. Okay, so let's move on to question two. How can you relate the power text of the lesson to the story? How can you relate the power text to the story? Just to remind you about the power text, power text is Galatians 6, verse 2. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. So that's the power text. I'll repeat the question again. How can you relate the power text to the story? I'll go first. Um, just how it says to help carry each other burdens. Just how Simon, he helped to carry the cross that Jesus was bearing because um, like it said in PowerPoint, he went like 12 hours without drinking and eating. So just helping them to carry that burden to finish this mission that God has God had assigned them to do, it really helped him a lot. But as Christians, it was reminding us that if we see a fellow Christian struggling with something, we must not go to them and just wrap around them. But with gentleness, we will try to carry the burden with them and help them to overcome whatever they are facing. All right, I would like to say, I really enjoyed this question when I first saw it. And so here's my answer. I thought how, I thought when it said, put your burden onto the Lord, I thought it was a very good thing to say and a very good thing to relate to the story because, um, because of how the man, oh, uh, sorry, uh, Simon, Simon had to carry the cross for Jesus. Jesus was way too weak to carry it way too weak and so the soldier told Simon to help and so he did carry it up carry up the mountain for him and that's like carrying each other burden like Jesus was too like was too weak to carry it but Simon helped him out and it's had the real world that's what we must do too and so approaching them like oh you can't do this by yourself well sucks to be you no we need to help them with a loving heart uh just like Marcy said we're not gonna re reprimand them or anything, we have to, you know, be nice, be kind, have a gentle heart. Well, I'm, I'm really about to say the fruit of the spirit. All right, so well, I have all. Just be gentle, have a gentle heart, and just stay positive. I do agree, and I think the Bible verse relates to the story, like everyone said. Um, Simon basically took the burden, which was the cross from Jesus and helped him out. And um, like my, like the story says, he was beaten, not enough to kill him, but just enough to make him hurt. And um, he wasn't eating, he wasn't drinking. And you know, along with all the emotional burdens, like people laughing at you, um, what's the word, squawking or mocking you or something like that um scoffing at you sorry scoffing and like it's just it's it's a lot to take on but Simon I mean he was just a bystander he was just looking but somebody just pulled him and said hey take this and he didn't protest and he didn't try to um hesitate he he actually did it because he knew that his sons were believers and like the story said um he he then would become a believer as well. So like this verse says, um, you'll fulfill the law of Christ. And they said, love um, one another. And that is what he was doing. And um, yeah, do unto others that you would have them do unto you. I'm pretty sure if Simon was carrying the cross and he needed somebody to carry it for him, he would have wanted somebody to do the same thing that he did for Jesus. So that is how this relates to the story. 
I love all your answers. Um, I love especially KJ's answer because it was put in, you know, me already. I like it, it's a perspective. And it's always good when you are doing a story that you put it not just in context that is in the words of the context, but also in the situational context, the historical background. The question was, how can you relate the power text to the story? Power text is Galatians 6 verse 2, carry each other's burdens, and in this way you fulfill the law of Christ. The part in the power text, remember, I remember in the, um, the Bible lesson at Sagrat, I said, this is the lesson of all grace in action. Now carrying each other's burdens. A lot of people mistake grace mercy and pity i believe they're three different words because they're used in three different contexts grace mercy and pity so when the lesson is about grace in action it's talking about doing it because you know it's right because i believe that's the meaning for grace and then pity it's just doing it because you feel sorry. Like you might not want to do it, but just because you see it, you're like, let me just do this and get it over with. Because you have that tug on your soul, then mercy is, you know, doing something even if you don't deserve it. But this story talks about grace and carrying each other's burdens. Now, carrying each other's burdens can mean a lot of stuff. In this story, it mainly talks about how Simon carried Jesus' cross. And power text mainly talks about the main idea of the lesson. That's one thing I love about the power text. Um, Marcia, you want to say something? Um, I just wanted to add something on that because formally I didn't include the part that you will fulfill the law of Christ. And as we all mentioned before that, the law that we will we'll be fulfilling is loving our neighbor as ourselves. And what I just thought about just now is how Simon, he really just, he just showed that love because as I was reading, doing some study on the lesson, um, it said that if you, like if you go near the people who are being crucified or, or carrying the cross, then you'll be you'll be unclean like in the past in the power one it said that um simon came to jerusalem for the passover but now we can partake in the passover now because he is now ceremonially unclean and by loving others like you love yourself you'll put down your pride to do what is needed to benefit them and during the just simon i guess he did have compassion for jesus and he could have been like all the other Jews to try to refuse and not be not to become unclean to not partake in the Passover. But he showed his love for Jesus and the compassion for him by stepping up and taking on that burden. And that will that helped Jesus in that time when he was physically weak. I just like to add that yes, I agree because like. They had to Simon had to sacrifice a lot because he probably really really wanted to um, partake in the Passover, but because he tried to help Jesus out, he had to sacrifice that. And I don't, I'm not aware, and I don't know, but is it doesn't that like happen like once a year, or something like that? I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. But I think it's something. It's like it really. It's really important, and for him to sacrifice that. That was really big. Okay. So let's move on to the third question. What chance did you have this week to do some acts of kindness? What chance did you have this week to have to do some acts of kindness? Go Nathaniel. All right, this might be a bit extreme, but earlier this week, my friends and I, 
we're playing basketball. And then the ball wandered over to the tree. No, not to the tree. I mean, like the grass. I couldn't get it. And then my friend Ricardo wanted to go get it too. And so we said, let's race for it. Which was, in my mind now, I feel stupid for doing that. But uh, we ran to the ball, and this was, he tripped on a rock. He tripped on a rock and busted his lip. Oh, man. Like, it was, like, right here. And he also, like, scarred, like, this piece of his ear right here. It's been hurting him a while. Yeah, I told you, like, it was extreme. And I asked to feel the right, which was stupid. Like, obviously, he's not all right. Blood is coming out of his mouth. I quickly, I mean, like, quickly took him to the school nurse. And they got him cleaned up. Because my friends couldn't see what happened to him. Because the ball was, like, way out there. And he could not, they could not even see Ricardo. So, in their mind, they're probably thinking, like, what's taking them so long? So, I came rushing, rushing back, saying, he just had to get to the school nurse. And I'm glad that we got him fixed up. And the nurse said, he you know, he can't come to school for the next five days, she said, the next five days. So, basically, he's not coming back this week. Coming back next week, but... Yeah, so I'm not going to see him for three weeks because this week I'm not going to see him, and those and next week is our Easter break, so I'm not going to see him for three weeks. But I really hope he's recovering well. That's nice. That's nice. Um, I think this could be considered as the act of kindness, but it was just last night. And at church, I met a girl, and she is trying to get more. Um, she's trying to start or deepen her relationship with God. And she was just telling me about the thing. She feels she just felt that she has been disappointing God, and I just was encouraging her and telling her that if she's feeling this way, then she's definitely on the right track because the devil he wants to disappoint her. Well, he wants to discourage her and tell her and let her to delve in those negative emotions and give up on trying to find the truth by seeking God. But I was just um, encouraging her and reminding her of Bible scriptures and then all that things. And I just, it's really nice that God, I really was grateful that God used me and he felt that I was the person that she can come to to ask when she was struggling with a Christian life, I guess. That's nice. Um, I missed basically half of the week of like school of everything. Like I was just home for like three days, um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we had a seminar, so I didn't do anything. So Friday is the only day I can think of. And then again, I wasn't to school because I had to go off campus for a competition um, down south. If anybody knows, I lived it's pretty long, so it's kind of far away from school. Went to Governor's Harbor. And so I came back like 20 minutes before the bell rang for school to close. And um, the competition I went to, I won. And um, and um, they gave me this gift bag and they don't know I'm Seventh-day Adventist. I'm guessing that they don't know. And they set up these, or they don't know the values. Um, and so they set up this little gift basket and gift um, bag. And I had, I opened it, and it was a really nice, fancy box. And it was a pearl necklace and airing set I was like I'm not gonna wear this um so I just put it back in my bag and I am the kind of person whereas if I have a friend who's not a seven-day Adventist and I have something that they would wear it's contradictory it really is but if I don't wear it and I don't want to have it sitting there just wasting I would give it to you if you want it so 
I I don't support wearing earrings and all of that. And it almost seems like I am supporting it by giving it to her. But I didn't want it to sit in my house and just sit there and just throw it away. They bought, they gave it to me as a gift. So I re-gifted it and gave it to, gave it to my friend. And it's, it is contradictory, but I think it's an act of kindness. I, I try. So you're passing it on? Yeah. Cause like, I, I, I'm, I don't, I'm not going to wear it. I'm not going to sit, I have it sit in my house. Somebody gave this to me and they spent their money on this. So instead of me just having it there, I would like to give it to somebody who would make use of it in a sense. That's what I I know what you mean because like in situations like that, my mother, she would either tell me, Marcia, we have to throw it away. Or I think in like one instance, I had like a a bracelet and then I gave it to my next door neighbor. But yeah, mostly, more likely we throw it away. It, it, this, I just, I don't like throwing away jewelry because the stuff is expensive. So I just give it to people. And this happens pretty often. It's really odd. It happens. People know I'm seven day Adventist and they still, and I went to a wedding and they, I told her, she said, you know, and I said, you know, I don't wear this stuff. And she, I don't know how it happened, but there was a mix up and it, a bracelet ended up in my bag. And I just, just gave it to my friend. Cause I was like, I'm not going to wear this. But it happens pretty often, but that is what I did this week. What was wrong with the bracelet? Pardon? What was wrong with the bracelet? I don't wear bracelets. I only wear a watch. So, yeah. All right. Just to put some biblical context on it. Now, ironic that my name is Joshua. I'm going to quote from Joshua. The talks about, no, I was just for Exodus. This was before. It was talking about how you guys are going to meet up with God, put away all your jewelry, put away all your necklace, all your earrings, everything, put them up. And yet still after that, they still had some necklace jewelry and something to make a golden cap literally 10 days later, which doesn't make any sense. I don't know how that happened. It just did. Apparently they didn't throw them away. Okay. So... This happened yesterday at church. First of all, I'm going to say two things. One, I love little children that are under the age of four, which does not include my little brother. <laughs> oh, I love little children. I, I love that. I love their innocentness when they're not innocent. Like I have this, I have this, there's this little kid called Jadon. He's about three. And then we're we're at Pathfinder, right? And and the and the Pathfinder's director is like, everyone told the line, Jaden sitting there. Everyone told the line, <laughs> Jaden sitting there. So Jaden gets up, told the line, Jaden walk over, hand in the mouth, suck on the finger, and told the line, and then run back to the bathroom. I love his innocentness when he's not innocent. I just, I just love little children, and little and little children love me. It's like my caring self. Just they just my personality. I, I just love it. Uh, okay, now let me talk about something else. Now. Um, yesterday I was at church, and there is this new person. She's female. She's eleven now. She's 11 turning 12. Now, me, this is just me. If I see a female come to my church, I'm going to make sure I do all in my power that she stays at that church. <laughs> I only have one, there's only one female in my age group at church, which has hardly been heard ever at my church. So if I see a female come, I'm going to make sure I do all in my power that she stays at that church. So I be caring, I be loving, I be helpful. I make my personality spell out. And that's just my way of being kind. <laughs> just my way of being kind. I'm not, I'm not saying that usually I don't do that. But I'm just saying in those moments, I just feel as if it's necessary. Like necessary for my, you know, look at it this way. Look at it this way. Look at it this way. I go to a boys school, okay? 
So when I go to church, it's the only time I, I get to see a, a single female in my age group, okay? So just... Okay. <laughs> oh, my Let God. me be. Let me be. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Let oh me my God. Okay. Okay. Hope you guys enjoy the questions today. I'll hand over to Kezia now. Thank you so much, Joshua, <laughs> for those questions. That last answer had me cracking up. You guys heard Joshua does all in his power to make sure that the female stays at the church. And I agree because a lot of times, honestly speaking, out of out of all in all seriousness sometimes there's a lack of a certain gender in an area and it's true sometimes it's all males or sometimes it's all females and it's good to have a, a mixed group and it's fun to have a mixed group so i understand where you're coming from i actually do um but thank you so much for the questions joshua i really enjoyed this this discussion we were really bouncing off of each other's answers and giving each other feedback and i really enjoyed the questions joshua i had a great time and i know that marcia and nathaniel did as well based on their answers and how hard they were laughing just now so thank you um I know PowerPointers, I know you wish it could go on, um, but it can't because we have so much more coming up next. Coming up next, we have our pastor DJ with our 28 grades and lesson recap. Then we have question time. We'll also have Takel's tasty treats. Um, yeah, that's about it. Um, coming up next, and then we also have, we would also say thank you to Uncle PJ for our PowerPoint recap earlier. So we'd like to say thank you to him because he opened up the program with such a bang of energy. So we thank you, Uncle PJ. And also PowerPointers, if you have not visited this website already, please visit kidsclubproduce.org. I'll put it right here, kidsclubproduce.org. We are on there as well as some other great Christ-centered programs. So please check that website out. Also, please subscribe to the program if you have not already. We would love for you just to click that. We're going to give you like three seconds right now just to slide. Don't go anywhere, but just slide, click that green red button like just once. And yeah, just subscribe. Just do that for us. Currently, we have 1.15K subscribers. So thank you guys so much for all of your love and support. Please keep share, keep on doing whatever you're doing. I don't know what you all are doing, but please subscribe, keep on sharing, and keep on liking. Um, also, please visit our Instagram account at PowerPoint Sabbath School. I think it's, yeah, it's at PowerPoint Sabbath School. So please check our Instagram account out and follow us there as well. Um, if you guys would like to chat with us any kind of way, it's coming up later, but it's a little thing. But if you guys like to chat with us, you can email us at PowerPointSabbathSchool at gmail.com. Once again, PowerPointSabbathSchool at gmail.com. Thank you guys so much for answering questions with Joshua. And thank you, PowerPointers, for staying to the very end of the discussion. But before we close, can Marcia please pray for us? Oh, let's bow, bow all our schools. And most gracious Father, please allow this lesson to touch the hearts of others and allow them to help others when they are in need. Lord, can you please let them to be drawn to you, Lord? In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Marcia, for that quick with sweet prayer thank you so much once again thank you joshua for those awesome questions and thank you nathaniel for coming on the program with marcia and i thank you powerpointers for staying to the end of the discussion and we will see you all next week bye bye, -bye. if anyone is in christ he is a new creation. This is Pastor DJ with What We Believe. Fundamental belief number 11 speaks of growing in Christ. Growing in Christ. We believe as Seventh-day Adventists 
that when someone invites Christ into、um, their heart, um, change starts to take place. In other words, the places that they go,、uh, things that they watch, and the words that are coming from their mouth really reflect. Um, their maturity in Christ. And so we are not born again. We are not a new creation in Christ to remain the same like yesterday.、Uh, but we are born in Christ to grow every day and also to minister to others who are in need. Okay? Minister to them physically. Okay? Like the Samaritan who cared for the man who, 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 was, who was attacked. And so, today, young people, let us continue to reach out to others and let us be the light that Christ has called us to be. Rise and shine. Happy Sabbath.